Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. In this video, we are talking about one of our special right triangles that we're going to need in trigonometry. The first one we're going to talk about is our 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Now, that 45, 45, 90 refers to the 45 degrees corresponding with the leg. Now, the leg is not 45 degrees, degrees is an angle. So, this angle of 45 degrees and this angle of 45 degrees and this angle of 90 degrees have a relationship with the leg to leg and hypotenuse. So let's start with what the 45, 45 degree 90 triangle looks like. So it looks like an isosceles triangle because we have angles that are the same, angles that are congruent. We have 45 degrees here, 45 degrees here. Based on the isosceles triangle theorem, that means that the opposite, I believe it's the converse theorem, the opposite sides from the congruent angles are also congruent. So what that means is if I have a 45 degree angle here, let's call this A, then this little A is going to be congruent to little B. I'm going to just write C here for the hypotenuse. So we have that. So that means this side and this side of the triangle are congruent. Now, what does that mean when we're labeling it up? So let's go ahead and write out our 45, 45 degrees here. If we know that these two sides are congruent, let's say one of them is X. So if this side right here is X, that means the opposite side is also X. And then if we do the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we actually find out that the hypotenuse is x times the square root of 2. So this is very special to this 45, 45, 90 degree triangle because this is the pattern that always will be true when you have a 45 degree inside an angle. That's a right angle. It has to be a right angle. So we're going to be giving you side lengths. So I'm going to give you a leg. I'm going to give you a hypotenuse. And we're going to ask you to solve for an unknown side. So I want to show you that this right here is a leg. This right here is a leg. And this right here is your hypotenuse. And I abbreviate hypotenuse as hippo. So we have a leg, a leg, and hypotenuse. So make sure that you understand that both legs are the exact same size. To convert a leg, you guys can't see, to a hypotenuse. So if you have a leg measure and you want to convert that to a hypotenuse, then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply by a root Two. So whatever your leg is, let's say your leg is three. If your leg is three, that means three times the square root of two is the size of your hypotenuse. Now, if you are converting from the hypotenuse to the leg, that means you're going backwards. You're going to divide by root two. Now, be careful when you are dividing by root two. You cannot. So I'm going to write a note here. You cannot have a radical in the de denominator. So make sure to rationalize the denominators. Okay, a moment to write that down. But make sure to rationalize the denominator. You cannot actually have a square root as a denominator. So make sure to rationalize that. All right, let's go ahead and move on. There are two other theorems. These are the converse, I believe it's the converse of the Pythagoras. I could be wrong. So this here, we have two theorems that state if we have an a squared, b squared, and c squared, however, it is not an equal statement. So we have c squared is greater than the sum of a squared plus b squared. That means that you have an obtuse triangle. 
If you have your C squared less than the sum of A squared and B squared, then your triangle is an acute triangle. It's little, it's tiny. So we're going to use that. We're also going to be talking about our special right triangles in our examples. Let's go ahead and get going. All right. So to find the unknown leg measure, we're going to set up a equation. We're going to say the hypotenuse is equal to x root 2. So the hypotenuse is always across the street from your right angle. Oops. Hypotenuse. So you're going to say your hypotenuse is equal to x root 2. Now we know this is going to be x root 2 because I see a 45 degree and a 90 degree. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. You have to have that memorized. Since we know the hypotenuse is equal to x root 2, I'm going to say the hypotenuse is 12, and that's equal to x root 2. That means that I'm going to divide by root 2 both sides. So now x is equal to 12 root 2. Now, is this your answer? And I hope everyone is screaming, no, this is not your answer. This right here is incomplete. You need to rationalize. So I'm actually going to draw an arrow here. And to rationalize the denominator, you're going to take that top number, whatever that top number is, and you're going to take that radical. So in this case, this root 2, you're going to multiply by root 2, top and bottom, and then that denominator remains 2. It's like saying 2 squared, and then you take the square root of that. So you're just left with 2. And whatever here you have is a number root 2. Let's actually see that happen in real life so we know what, what's going on. So I'm going to say I have 12 over root 2. So I'm going to take that root 2. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by it. So that means I have 12 times root 2. And that's going to be divided by root 2 times root 2. Now, root 2 times root 2 is just root 2 squared. And as we learned with radicals, there's a secret index of 2 here. And that 2 and this 2 of an exponent, they undo each other, they cancel out. So you're left with 12 times the square root of 2 divided by 2. Now, because you have multiplication, you'll notice that multiplication is very much king. Multiplication is king. It's so important. I call it the king. 12 divided by 2, that is 6. 6 times root 2, and that is your answer for x. After you have rationalized your denominators, your answer is 6 root 2 for the value of x. Let's do more examples. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to have this in front of me, which is the beginning of today's lesson, and I'm going to say to convert the leg to hypotenuse, you're going to multiply by root 2. To convert hypotenuse to leg, divide by root 2. So step number one, I'm going to identify that this is my hypotenuse. And again, I call my hypotenuse a hippo. Hypotenuse. So I want to go from a leg, this is my leg, to a hypotenuse. My leg is 2 root 2. This is my leg. So to go from a leg to a hypotenuse, you're going to multiply by another root 2. So I'm going to multiply my leg by root 2. So that means that we have 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Square root of 2, square root of 2, we just did that one. That is root 2 squared. And again, there's that secret index of 2, which is here. Cancels out. So we have 2 times 2, and that equals to 4. 
So the hypotenuse is 4. Let's try that again. Now we have, again, identify your hypotenuse first so you know which ones are your legs. This is your hypotenuse. Across the street from the 90 degree angle, this is your hypotenuse. So if you are going from your hypotenuse to your leg, you're going to divide by root 2. You're going to undo that. Kind of what we did in the previous example where we set up that equation. So your hypotenuse, I'm just going to section this out here. Your hypotenuse is equal to 4. So your hypotenuse is equal to 4. But we know that the hypotenuse is equal to x root 2. So I'm going to divide by root 2 both sides. My root 2's cancel here. So I have 4 divided by root 2 as my potential answer. But now notice you have that root 2 in the denominator. So you're going to have to rationalize the denominator. Multiply top and bottom by root 2. Again, in the denominator, it stays. As just 2, 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And again, we have multiplication, multiplication is king, and because we have multiplication, 4 divided by 2 can be simplified. So your answer for x is 2 root 2. Now, now, because we know that x is 2 root 2, and we know that we have a 45, 90, 45 triangle. We note that this is an isosceles triangle, so both legs are congruent to each other. So if x is equal to 2 root 2, then y is equal to 2 root 2 also. Now we could have cheated and looked at this example. We know the hypotenuse is 4, so we already knew that the leg was going to be 2 root 2, but I did want to show you how to solve that. Let's try one more for example 4. We have the hypotenuse, so your hypotenuse is equal to x times root 2. Your hypotenuse is equal to 2 times root 2. Oops, excuse me, your hypotenuse is not equal to that. Your hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the square root of 6, and that's equal to x times root 2. Now again, you're going to divide by square root of 2. Don't let that scare you, it's okay. So we have x on this side. On this other side, I have 2 times, and I'm going to separate it out a little bit, root 6 divided by root 2, because I want to use the quotient property for radicals. I have some space here. I'm going to do a little squiggly line. I'm going to bring that over. With the quotient property for radicals, that means I can combine them into one radical. Because of my index, that's the same. I have an index of 2 here. I have an index of 2 here. That means I can put them into one radical. 6 divided by 2, that is 3. So my x is equal to 2 times the square root of 3. Since we know this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we have our legs that are congruent. So if x is equal to 2 root 3, that means y is also equal to 2 square root of 3. All right, let's do a few more. Is triangle ABC a right triangle? So this is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem that I thought the other one was. But this is the actual converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem states, if you have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then that means you have a right triangle. So we don't know if this ABC triangle is a right triangle. It could be, could not be, but we have to check. So the way to check is just do the original a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now that matters to how you mark up the triangle. Make sure, I'm going to draw one here. It doesn't really matter. Make sure that the longest side is your c value. 
Make sure that the longest side is your C value. If it isn't, it, will, it won't work. So let's see here. We have longest side is 20, so that's going to be my C value. So that means 20 squared. Now A and B doesn't really matter because you're just adding and squaring. So here's your squared, 12 squared plus 16 squared. And I'm going to put a little question mark there just to check because we don't know it's equal. If I just leave it as equal, I'm going to be telling something that potentially could not be true. So we're just going to see 12 squared is equal to 144 and 16 squared is equal to 256. I'm going to hold off on this just for a moment. 144 plus 256, that is 400. And then I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to say 20 squared is 400. Because this is equal, because this is equal, that means yes, this is a right triangle. If it is not equal, if it is not equal, then we have to go back to the other two theorems. If it is greater than the sum, then you have an obtuse. If it is less than, then it's acute. Just think of it this way. When if something is acute, right, acute, they're tiny. I'm thinking like kittens, pup and puppies. They're, they're super cute, very tiny. So that means it's going to be less than, okay? And obtuse is just the opposite of that. All right, let's go ahead and give that a shot. Again, largest side. So I don't know off the top of my head what the square root of 35 is. So I'm going to type that into the calculator just to get an approximation. This is about 5.9. So because I typed that into the calculator, I do have a decimal, but I don't really want to use that. I just need to know that that is my longest side. This one here also, we can, this one's a little easier because we know 15 is the longest. So let's do this one first. We have 5 squared plus 4 squared is potentially equal to the square root of 35 squared. So we'll see. And I'm just going to type everything into my calculator. I don't really want to press enter too many times. So 5 squared plus 4 squared. And if you don't want to use the caret, you can just use this squared button right here. So if we do that, we got 5 squared plus 4 squared. And if you have negative numbers, you must, you must, you must, you must use parentheses. So this here is 41. Now, check the square root. Now, I already know that this is going to be 35, but if you don't, that's okay. So you would put that in parentheses, you would do the square root of 35, and then you would square that, and that gives you 35. Now, I did put an equals, I'm going to erase that because it's not equal. This is your a squared plus b squared, this is your c squared. Now, looking back at our notes, is a, the summation, is the sum bigger or is the sum smaller? So the sum, this sum right here, this guy is bigger than 35, okay? That means 35 is smaller, right here. This is small, this is bigger. So I'm gonna say bigger sum. So when you have a bigger sum, that means your C value is smaller, that means you have an acute. So this is acute triangle. If you want to flip it around, that's fine. Let's do this one here. Again, longest side. Longest side is 15. We can flip it around since I did it the other way there. Here's our sum. Oh, and again, I'm going to put a question mark here. So that way we, we don't know if it's greater than, equal to. It could be. And again, typing this on my calculator, 12 squared plus 8 squared, and that gives me 208. And I'm going to put a little box here, just so we know. 15 squared is 225. Which one's bigger? 225 is definitely bigger than 208. Looking at our cheat sheet here, 
the sum on this side is smaller. The C value squared is larger. So C value is larger, C value is larger. That means we have an obtuse triangle. So the answer is obtuse triangle or acute triangle or a right triangle. This right here, what we did is considered your work to find out the answer. All right, beautiful people, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.